So hey there, I am coming to you live from my dining room. You are not going to see my face tonight. I uh, don't want to do it that way. <laughs> I am actually just waiting a couple minutes to see if anybody's going to hop on here just really quickly. Um, and I'm ch changing my view on my computer so I can see what you all see and make sure that I'm showing you everything that I want you to see. Um, so that was pretty good. You never know whenever your camera is not right next to where you are if you're getting the right angle and all that jazz. I think I may have adjusted that the wrong way. Okay, so tonight I'm going to talk to you about our Chocotour inks. And um, these are permanent inks if you want them to be. They don't have to be permanent. Um, they come in our three ounce containers just like our chalk paste do, but the consistency of this is different. Um, it dries hard to, the, or like, uh, hard to the touch, I guess you would say, uh, just like our paste do, except if you heat set these, and you can tell it's a little creamier than what you would um, find for our chalk paste. Uh, but if you heat set these with a heat gun, an iron, or an oven, um, these actually become permanent. So um, it's pretty cool. I want to just first of all show you guys uh, what you, some things that you can do that I've already done with all of this. And for some reason... Sorry, my page just shifted on me. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm going to share this out real quick. Before I finish up here. I'm going to show you guys some of the projects that I've already done with the ink so you can kind of see the versatility of all of that kind of stuff. Um, Sorry, I'm also sharing this in some groups. And on my personal timeline real quick here, so that everybody can see it. Um, so I've been working on some stuff today with my um, inks and everything, and I thought it would be kind of cool for you guys to see. So I did some projects today um, kind of in a, a hurry. Not in a hurry, I guess, but in preparation for tonight. Um, so anyway, here's what I got. I did this today. My husband and I are going on vacation. We're going to Mexico in uh, just a couple of weeks, actually. And so I went ahead and made this. Now let me preface this by saying this is not made with chalk couture transfers. and. I wish that I had. We don't have these um, words on a transfer, um, although, surprise, surprise, May 1st, they're coming out with a new line of transfers that are going to be like summer themed, so I'm really, really fingers crossed. It's going to be a surprise for everybody, but fingers crossed they're going to have some of this kind of stuff um, for us to use. So anyway, I found these transfers at a craft store, and they were on clearance, and I thought, well, why not? I'll give them a try. And it was a big mistake for me to use those. Um, this actually took me two hours. I might as well have just hand painted the whole thing myself instead of trying to use the transfers because the adhesive on them wasn't very good. This is a textured material and so the ink bled underneath of the transfer and like frayed the letters and I had to go back in and hand paint everything and it took forever. So I'm just saying, there's other transfers out there, and yeah, you can make them look good, but you're going to put a lot more work into it than if you had just used the chalk couture transfers because they're adhesive, good adhesive, <laughs> reusable, and they're just a better quality product than you'll find other places. So anyways, here's something you can do with the inks, though. I did use the ink on these, and... Um, this is heat set, so it's permanent now. This is my hat, this is the way that it looks, and it's gonna be a lot of fun to wear this on vacation in just a couple of weeks. Um, and then here's a couple of other things that I've done. I'm a really big fan of the t-shirts. 
um, you know, with cute stuff on it. So these are a couple of t-shirts that I've made using Chalk Couture inks and transfers. Much easier. This one took me maybe three minutes from start to finish. Uh, this is our copper metallic ink. And these are actually two separate transfers. This is a Dream Create Inspire transfer, which is all one together. It comes with, um, you can cut it apart or you can leave it like it is. And I left it like it is because I like that it's lined up evenly. And then this is from our Cut Apart Hearts uh, transfer. It's just six little hearts that you can cut apart. Um, while I'm discussing that, I want to show you this is a little sample kit that I've put together um, exclusively by me. So this is not like a company thing that you can go buy online. This is made personally by me. So this is a chalkable chalk chip. It's literally just a little chalk, double-sided chalk chip. This is a little piece of a squeegee that I cut apart from our small squeegees that look like this. Another cut apart heart. It actually happens to be the exact same one that I used on here. My business card and the transfer use and care instruction sheet. And so this is just a little sample kit where you can use this on here, both sides. And um, I didn't put the little vial in here, but I have a little vial that gives you a sample of our white chalk paste. And if you would like one of these, you just need to let me know. I only ask, they're free to you, but I only ask that you pay the shipping charge, which happens to be $3 because I have to put it in a bubble mailer. Um, and it comes in this cute little bag too. So if you are interested in getting a free sample, so you can try Chalk Couture for yourself and see if it's something that you would really even enjoy. Uh, the good news is there'll be enough paste in there for you to use more than once. And this transfer, like all of our transfers, can be used 8 to 12 times. Um, so you just get a paste, not an ink. If you want the ink, you'll have to purchase uh, from me or from my website. So I'll set this aside here and then show you some others. Uh, this is another shirt that I did. We're going to be using this transfer tonight to make a project. Um, I just think this is hilarious because I said so. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> what mom doesn't say that on a regular basis and find this funny. Um, so anyway, we do have chalk paste. They come in multiple colors. We have our chalk inks um, also coming in multiple colors. And tonight we're going to start with this little cutting board. Now, I could use chalk paste on this project, but I am going to heat set this with an iron and make it permanent. If you use the chalk paste, it will stay uh, when you rub it. The only thing is if it gets wet, it rubs off and you would have to seal it with a clear uh, sealer. However, our products are not food safe. So this is a cutting board, but it's strictly for decoration because you cannot put food on here and then eat it if you have our products on them. Um, even after it's heat sealed, they just recommend that you don't. So, um, one of the things that I made in that regard um, just today is this. This was an ink project that I did. You can see there's an ombre feather on there. And then, just so there was no confusion in my house about whose cup this belonged to, I put the name Mama's on here. <laughs> this is also part of a transfer that we're going to be using tonight as well, actually on this very project. Um, and this is the feather from one of our other transfers that is currently retired. So you will not see me work any projects with this transfer, even though it's absolutely one of my favorites. Fingers crossed they come out with another feather transfer soon because I really, really like this. Um, and let's see, what else did I do? I guess that's it for my ink projects. Um, but anyway, if you'll notice on this cup, I don't have any of the um, design close to where my mouth would be on the cup itself. Um, just for a safety factor, it probably wouldn't hurt you in the least. It is a permanent thing now, um, but just to be safe, I would say don't do that. And if you're doing a cutting board like this, don't use it for food, just use it for decoration. This has a little hook on it. It's perfect for hanging it up and just using it in that way. So let's get started. Um, tonight I'm using our Mama's Kitchen Transfer. It's the same word Mama's that I wrote on the cup over there. Um, but we're going to use the whole thing tonight. It's all one piece here. And let's see. These are two other pieces from the same transfer set. 
uh, that I'm going to put on here. So I'm going to lay this down. Let's see. I guess I want it to go this way. And then I'm going to put this on here so that I can get a good idea of where to lay this. And a lot of times when I'm not sure and I'm just eyeballing stuff, I'll actually pinch my transfer top and bottom uh, after I fold it in half so that I can see the exact middle of the transfer. It doesn't damage the transfer. It doesn't affect the way that it, it lays down. And because it's adhesive, it'll stick. And I just used this earlier today, but I'll show you. This is fuzzing your transfer. So you need to fuzz your transfer before you use it the first time at least. Um, but I do every time, at least a couple of times, simply because they're very sticky adhesive. And I don't want it to pull up any loose material that might be on here. This is wood. It's not exactly a super flat texture, although this has been sanded. Um, anyway, you fuzz your transfer to literally pick up some fuzz off of a towel, and then you use it so it doesn't stick quite as hard. I'm going to assume on this that the little hook or little rope here in the middle is the actual center of this. Now, I kind of jumped in here assuming that Everybody who's watching probably um, already knows what chalk couture is, but I could be wrong. This is a little crooked. I'm going to replace it. Um, chalk couture is a company that just started last year, and they make reusable silk screen vinyl transfers. I know you can't really see um, with my camera here, but... Um, this transfer, anywhere you see a blank space, actually has a thin silk screen in the middle of it. And they also make paste and inks, and they make surfaces um, that you can purchase to do things on. All of the projects that I'm doing on tonight are things that I purchased at a craft store. So you don't have to use our products, um, but they are typically much better quality than what you can find at your local store. Okay. Uh, I'm going to fuzz this one. I've never used this piece of the transfer before and the heart as well. And because I'm using um, these separately and not having to overlap the transfer designs at all, I'm going to go ahead and lay them all out first and then put my ink down. Um, all right, I think that's about good. I'm going to center this up too. Just to be sure it looks good. I'm kind of weird about stuff like that. Ooh better if I put it on the right way. Um, once again, I'm going to try to center this up with that above there. A mm, little crooked. And the thing about this too is you see me, I keep lifting these up and putting them back down, lifting them back up and putting them back down. Um, you can do that. <laughs> it doesn't mess up the transfer and it won't mess up your design and the adhesive is still good no matter what. Lastly, I'm going to throw this little heart down here, also fuzzing it. I know it seems silly because it's small, but just better safe than sorry. Um, it can ruin your design, and it can also ruin um, your transfer if it pulls up extra stuff that won't come off the back. It might not lay down again on another surface. So, these are overlapping a tiny bit here, but it's not going to affect the design. I think I like it like that. All right, so the colors I've chosen to use, obviously I'm going to use red on the heart because that's super cute. Um, but I'm going to use this navy blue. Um, this one they actually call Midnight Sky. So if this is a color that you like and are interested in, that's what you'll be looking for, asking me about later on. Midnight Sky, you can see, that's a super pretty color. I'm using this one quite a bit actually. It's one of my favorites. And we have different squeegee sizes here. Um, this one and this one I cut apart from one that looked like this. Um, this is our angled squeegee. It's easier to hold because it's larger and thicker, but it also has lots of different sizes of angles and flat edges on here that you can use for your project. So I won't use the um, this flat edge tonight, but if I was going to, this would be a good one to use for this because of the size of this and the letters. I'm actually going to be using this one tonight. So, get started here. You just put some of your ink on the end of this, and you need less ink than you do chalk. So, if you're somebody who's already used the chalk paste, um, just keep in mind that if you're using the inks, it takes less ink than it does chalk. 
to um, make your project work. And so I literally just put it on here and make sure that it gets into the silk screen. One of the good things about the inks too is they don't dry as quickly as the chalk, so you don't have to work as fast um, to get your projects done. If your chalk or ink dries on your silk screen, whenever you pull your transfer, it'll actually pull the color up off of your surface and it will stick onto the transfer, which is not horrible. It just means that you're gonna have to clean off your transfer and then do that area over again. Um, which can just be kind of a pain and take a little bit longer. So if you just work fairly quickly in the first place, you don't have to worry about it. I'm just trying to get right here at the edge. That one little letter I could see that I was missing. And you can tell most of the time if you've gotten it on there good. Um, most of the time if I haven't gotten it on there good, it's because I got in a hurry and wasn't paying that much attention to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And here's what you do too. You go across, you scrape off your excess, save it back into your jar for the next time you want to use it because you use such a small amount. Oh my gosh, this thing lasts forever. Unless you're like me and you do projects like every day or every other day. And then when you pull your transfer, you start at the corner, but you want to grab it in the middle of the side to side or top to bottom and pull it that way. So you literally just pull this up and that's what it looks like. Now I've got a pan of water over here, so once I'm done with this, like I am right now, I'm just going to lay this over here face down in my pan of water so that some of the ink can start soaking off. And it'll be easier to clean up whenever I'm done with my entire project for the night. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the heart now. I'm going to use my small squeegee for that, or the tiny one that I cut. Oh, these colors are so vibrant. I love them. Um, one of the things too to notice, uh, you'll see, or you probably noticed whenever I laid that one down, it was stained. I used it with the black ink earlier today and it stained it and that doesn't really matter. It makes no difference. It's just a stain. It has no effect on the outcome of your project. So all that means is I've used those transfers frequently. They're well used, well worn, and I really like them. <laughs> okay, my little heart here. Go ahead and pull that. And then, if I can get a hold of the edge. Sorry, I'm trying to check my comments to make sure I'm not missing anything. If you're joining me and would like to, go ahead and say hello so I know that you're there. I saw that my sister is on here. I think my mom is with her. Um, so there's this one, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue down here for the little spatula and the spoon. And then this one will be done. And it's really that quick. Laying it down, putting your ink on. The ink's going so smooth. It's pretty cool. And you know, even if you did get a glob on here, it wouldn't matter. You're wiping the excess off, so you're not wasting any of your stuff. And it's not like, oh no, I put it down, I can't use it anymore. You just save it back into your jar and use it again the next time. All right, this one's totally done. I'm going to go ahead and pull this too. Once again, I'm going to try to grab it here at the corner and then I'm going to pull from top to bottom from the middle. If you pull corner to corner, you can stretch it and you don't want to do that because it might not lay properly the next time. Um, I just love that. It's so cute. Now, if I want to later on, I might add some extra stuff on the side. I've got some cute little flower things that are kind of a corner and I've got like uh, a little, um, vine wreath that I could do something with. But I actually kind of like it just like this. Sometimes less is more and I think in this case that's that's how I'm going to do this one. Okay, so these don't dry out as quickly but they will dry out so it's a good idea to just cap them until you're ready to use them again. So I'm going to set this aside for now. Now if once this is dry, which can take a little while, the inks take longer to dry than the um, chalk paste do, but once this is dry, I will throw down a piece of parchment paper and cover the entire design, and I will take a iron on medium heat, no steam, and I will iron this for four minutes, uh, just moving it around the whole time for four minutes, and once I'm done with that, this is permanently heat set, and it won't wash off, it won't come off with water, 
it'll just be set on there for good. Now if I were to leave it like this and let it dry and not heat set it, I could come back in at another time with a spray bottle or just stick this in the sink and wash it and it would wash off. Um, which is one of the cool things about this stuff too. Like sometimes you can use the ink or you can use the chalk. They both work the same way until you heat set the ink and it becomes permanent. I'm going to set this aside over here and I'm going to grab a paper towel because I need to clean my squeegees off real quick. And that's another reason why I keep this pan of water here um, so I can get these things cleaned off and reuse them. In an ideal world I would have like multiple squeegees and I wouldn't have to worry about that but I don't have them. They've been out of stock of the small squeegees online for in the angled squeegees actually for a little while um, we had some rapid company growth and um, anyway so it's a good sign things are out of stock although a bit frustrating at times they are back in stock we just got a notice about 45 minutes ago letting us know that stuff's back in stock now okay so this one's cleaned off let me clean that little one off if I can find it it fell in my bowl and disappeared and the next project we're going to do is also with ink. All of our projects tonight are going to be with ink. And I'm so in love with my um, Yeti cup that I've been drinking out of all day. It's actually encouraged me to drink more water simply because every time I want to look at it, I pick it up and I think, oh yeah, I'll just go ahead and have a drink of water. So I drink it. I made it. I washed it. I've been using it like all day long. So here's a Yeti cup that we're going to do. This is all one transfer, but we're not going to use it this way. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, oh, I see there's a little bubble in this. I better reset it. Um, if you have a bubble in your um, transfer when you lay it down, it will actually make a bubble in the ink or the chalk paste on your design. And that's not the end of the world, um, but I'm kind of a perfectionist, and that really bothers me when that happens. So I prefer to just lay it back down a second time and avoid that altogether. So I'm, because this is rounded, I'm going across it this way. So my plan with this is to do all good things R and then on the other side do the wild and free. And so I've got these little stir sticks that I use. They're actually... Um, cake pop sticks that I didn't use for cake pops, but they've worked out, or cake pops, they've worked out perfectly as stirs for my chalk couture inks and paste because they have this little lip on them here. I can lay it down on the table and it's not going to get the end to get chalk paste or ink all over my table. Although, if it did, it's not a big deal because it wipes off with water, so you're not ruining anything um, by doing that in the first place. So I'm just going to go over this one more time with this, and I think... To make it more fun, I'm going to do an ombre design on this. And just to keep this from rolling around while I'm trying to work on it, I'm going to lay my towel down to lay it on so it won't roll around. It's a little awkward too because I'm doing it upside down so that you guys can see the design better. Um, okay, so the plan here is to do, hmm, I think I'll do just white to blue and then blend them in the middle really well. Um, I think that'll look really pretty. And if I don't like it when it's finished, I can clean it off and do it again. That's one of the other great things about this is that you can't do it wrong. You just redo it, especially if it's on a surface like this that a white clean. Now, if you're using a canvas or something like that, yeah, you're a little stuck with what you do. But So I used this white paste earlier and um, had it open a little, so I'm just going to mix it around just a little bit with my squeegee and then lay this down here. So let's see, I've got four lines. So what I'll do is the top half um, just with white. And then I'll do the bottom half with the blue, then I will just use my finger and mix it around in the middle to blend it together and make that ombre effect that I'm so in love with right now. Um, so the entire R. 
And with that stir stick that I was showing you, I think I missed the point of that earlier, uh, telling you all what, it, what I was going to do with it. The end of it has a little ball on it, so I'm going to use that little ball to make um, like the dot, dot, dot on these. And see, I only did that once. And um, there's plenty. And I'm actually going to lay a little extra down here because I'm about to blend this in with my finger to get that ombre look. Lay this here on my lid. Now I'm actually I'm gonna put a little ink on my finger. Sticking it up right here. The idea is to blend this down and to blend that up so that they kind of meet in the middle like this. If I want to, I can kind of bring this up just a little bit more. I'm not going to scrape this off because um, I can smooth it out with my finger right here. Ooh, that's going to be cool. And now I'm just going to pull this. I'm going to go side to side. This is how you do the ombre. It's that simple. And it looks so neat whenever it's done. sure my transfer and I'm having a hard time pulling it because my fingers are dirty okay oh that looks cool I am loving that so I'm not gonna do the other side right here in front of you guys because um, I need to get this transfer cleaned off first and all of that but I will post a picture oh, I stuck my finger in it wouldn't you know all right well I'm gonna have to lay it down and redo that part anyway but that's okay. It's not a big deal. It just takes a little more time. That's all. It didn't ruin my design at all. Um, I'll just lay that G back down and uh, blend it in just a little bit with my finger there after this dries. I can't lay it down while this is still wet and this takes a little longer to dry. So all good things are, and I'm going to do dot, 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 and on the other side it's going to say wild and free and I think I'll reverse the ombre effect, do white on the bottom and then blue up to the top. Um, and then I may add like an arrow or something. This is also part of that Mama's Kitchen uh, transfer uh, that I did on the first project there. So I'll set this aside and let this dry and fix that up. I'm gonna hold a little bit closer so you guys can see it better. Y'all can see where I kind of messed up the the G there, I stuck my finger in it when I was pulling the transfer. Oh, I like the colors too. Kind of fitting for the cup. Okay, lastly, we're gonna do an ink project here on fabric. Let me lay that in there. Y'all, and I'm such a big fan of this blue, I think we're just gonna use it again. Um, as far as decoration color goes, it's a pretty solid color. The others are super bright which is not a bad thing. I'm just not sure that I would want to decorate my house with something so bright because my, my house isn't those colors. My house is much more like earth tones. Um, so what this is, is this is called a flower sack cloth. And I bought these in a 10 pack at Walmart. They're super thin and they look really nice um, once you've done a project with them with the ink. Now if you'll notice, I actually have a uh, cutting mat underneath of this. And this thing is huge, you guys. I don't know if you can see how big this is. But like, it's monstrous. So I, I washed it in case it was gonna shrink. I didn't want it to mess up the design later on. And I folded it in half and ironed a crease in the middle so I would know where the middle was when I was trying to lay my transfer down. For the same reasons last time, I'm real big on getting things centered and making sure it's exactly right. And um, I'm trying to wash my fingers off here. I got a little ink on them. Um, so anyway, that's how I plan to do this. I'm totally, totally going to eyeball this whole thing. I can't say that I've ever actually measured any of my pieces. I eyeball almost everything that I work on. Um, but this is so large, it's hard to deal with. So I'm going to fold the edges under so it won't get caught on stuff. 
but since I have that crease ironed into the fabric, um, I'll still be able to get it centered the way I want it without having to eyeball it to the edge. Okay, so this is part of that Mama's Kitchen transfer as well. It's another piece. If you put them all together, it makes like an 8 by 11 and a half, like a sheet of paper size um, transfer. They come with cut lines on them, so you can see the little white lines in here. Maybe, maybe not. If I hold it up, you can see there's a white line there. It shows you where to cut it, and generally that white line gives you a great idea of what's the center, um, how to center this on something if you're using edge to edge center. Uh, also, on the back of my transfers, I write what it is, uh, my transfer pages that you put it on, because um, when you got a bunch of transfers that you've used at one time, it's hard to remember which one went on what and which side is the back if you're in a hurry. Uh, I haven't used this one in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and fuzz this, and like I said, fuzzing is literally laying it on a towel and picking up some fuzz on the adhesive so it doesn't stick so bad. Although this particular uh, project is on fabric, so it really isn't a huge deal. Uh, it won't stick like it would on a flat surface glass, chalkboard, or wood. I'm going to fold that crease in there again so I can make sure that I get it right on the crease line here. And this is going to go underneath of my design. And I don't want to put it right at the edge. The edges of these towels tend to curl a little bit. I think I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. The idea is when I have this done and the ink is set, I can fold under um, the towel into threes the way that you would hang it like off your um, handlebar on your stove or your dishwasher or whatever. Uh, and um, it'll be right in the middle and it'll lay just perfect. Uh, Actually, I think I might overlap these designs just a little bit. So I'm going to lay one down, do it, and then lay the other one down and do it so I can get them um, the right distance um, to each other so it looks the way that I want it to look. So you do the same thing with this. Now the reason I have this mat underneath is because this is going to bleed through, the ink will bleed through the fabric a little bit. Um, and I don't want to get it all over the table because then it will get all over the underside of the design and just make a mess. Um, I just realized that I forgot to tell you all about this cup. These types of cups, um, this is a knockoff Yeti cup. I can't afford the real Yetis. <laughs> so anyway, inside of these, it's a double steel wall uh, design and it's compressed air inside of here, not an insulation material of any kind. So when you do a project on these and you're ready to heat set it, you put it in a cold oven for 350 degrees. So I would put it in a cold oven, shut the door, and turn the oven on. Then I set my timer for 40 minutes. That gives it time to heat up, and it gives your uh, project a solid 30 minutes to heat in the oven at 350 degrees. When the timer goes off, I don't take this out. I just shut the oven off, and I leave it in there to cool as the oven cools. And then whenever it's done, it's done, it's cool enough to touch, you can take it, stick it directly into the dishwasher or hand wash it or whatever you want to do with it, and um, it's ready to use after that. So these do take a little bit of plan ahead time to complete uh, all the way, but it's really cool whenever it's done, like I showed you guys that other cup that I did. Okay, so I have this down. This is going to work exactly the same way as the other things that I've done. I just need to get my stuff here. And like I said, I'm going to use blue again because, you know, I love the blue. I'm trying to check out my thing here and see if anybody's asking me any questions or anything. And I can see the comments better. I just adjusted the screen a little bit. Of course, I keep getting these little notices in my screen. Your Dropbox is almost full and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> okay. So I've got this all wiped off and ready to use again. And I'm going to use the blue for both of these. Um, I just love this blue color. It's so pretty. One of the other things about these projects is you can mix colors. Um, I don't actually have... 
the teal color that I used uh, on this one. I made that color earlier today. Getting a bit of an echo here. Um, I made that teal color today with our uh, yellow and this blue and white. And then I also mixed in the silver. I don't know if you guys can see that real well, but we have silver, gold, and copper metallics as well. They are awesome. So I mixed some of the silver in there too so that the teal color would have like a little fleck in it. It's pretty neat. All right, I'm ready to go. Now, when you're doing this on fabric, remember, it's going to bleed through some. So you don't have to go heavy on this at all. So I'm going to go real light on this so it won't feather on my project because that happens with fabric sometimes. Although now I'm going so light, I'm not getting coverage the way I need to. I'm gonna add a little extra. Here we go. Cover the S here. I'm all paranoid about the bleeding now too because of the hat that I did earlier. Um, so anyway, you just wipe this on here just like the other things. Make sure you get it in the silk screen all the way or you'll have to go back over it again. And let me just tell you guys, I am a messy crafter. If you can see on my arm, I think that's actually where I rubbed that Yeti cup was with my arm. I mean, how does that even happen? But, uh, and I have it on my thumb now. I just squeegeed my thumb trying to hold this in place. Now I'm using a cutting mat under here to protect um, my table and the underside of this, but uh, Chalk Couture, we actually make mats to put under these projects that um, have a little bit of a grip sticky to them so that you don't have to hold it like I'm doing now. If I don't hold this now like this, it's probably going to slide around as I'm putting a little pressure on it. Um, so I have to put my finger on here. If I were using one of our cutting mats, which I just haven't invested in yet, it's not that I don't want one, it's just I haven't done it yet. Um, I wouldn't have to hold my finger on it. And if y'all notice, I almost got off the edge of my transfer there. <laughs> on this, it wouldn't have gone too well. Um, on other projects, flat surfaces, you can wipe it off. So that wouldn't be a big deal. But I almost rubbed um, this on the edge there. And then I would have had a border. I would have had to go around the whole thing to make it all line up and look the same. I'm almost done with this. I'm just going to scrape the extra off. Um, and then... Put it back in my container and then pull this up then I'll be able to lay my second piece to this design down make sure it's lined up the way I want it so this is going to be a little harder to pull here's another thing if I were doing this on one of our cutting mats it wouldn't be hard to pull this because it doesn't give it might be better actually if I pull top to bottom we'll do it that way and get it all peeled up around the edges making sure I don't get my inked thumb down on the fabric. I did say though, I bought this in a, these in a tin pack, so if I ruin one, actually it wouldn't be ruined. I could just throw it into the machine. All right, because I said so. Now I'm gonna throw down this extra design. Now all of these transfers that I'm putting in this water bowl over here, I'm laying them all face down. I make sure that they're covered with water and then I'm good to go. Now, I fuzzed that towel so it wasn't as sticky as it would have been had I not done that. And it was still a little more difficult to pull up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fuzz this one about three or four times to make sure I'm picking up plenty of fuzz and then I'm gonna lay it down on there. I'm not 100% sure what of this is even supposed to be the top or the bottom. I'm gonna assume that this little swirl thing the bottom is supposed to be like that last swirl. So we'll just pretend like that's it. Ooh, I don't know where the middle is on this. Let me make a middle mark here. Both sides. And lay that on the line that I ironed. 
into the towel. All right, smooth this out. Now I need to be careful not to touch the rest of the design. It's not dry yet. So until it dries, it will smear and rub. And you know, I wish I could tell you how long it takes to dry. The chalk paste will dry in like a couple minutes max. Um, this takes longer. Uh, it just varies on how thick you get it. So if it's really thick, it's going to take longer to dry. A lot of times, like earlier today when I was working on the hat, I was layering it with white and blue. So I was um, using a hair dryer to dry it faster. And um, that didn't take much time at all. I was using a hot setting too because it heat sets to permanent. Um, that actually helped to set it a little bit better. So the same thing with this. I'm just going to go right over top of this. Make sure this gets all in the silk screen and then the towel will be done. And once this one is finished, I let it dry just like I do the project on the wood and the Yeti cup. And this one I use an iron on and because it's fabric and I can do it on both sides. I can't do both sides of the wood obviously, uh, but because this is fabric, I can iron both sides of this. So to set it, I will iron both sides for four minutes. And on the wood, I might actually, because I can't do both sides, I might actually iron it for a little longer, maybe six minutes, um, to make sure that it sets properly so I don't accidentally get some water on there and rub it off. Um, it's going to be something that, you know, is a design for the kitchen. The possibility it could get wet is higher than in other places in the house. Now you don't have to worry about permanently setting like wall decor because you know who's gonna spray water on your wall decor it's very unlikely unless again it's in the kitchen or in the bathroom then it'd probably be a good idea to put some sort of a clear lacquer or a spray i like uh rust-oleum makes a chalked brand matte spray uh, that's really great for sealing stuff because it doesn't give it a shine or a shimmer. Now the design of this one, because it's wider this way than this way, I think it'd be easier to pull it from side to side. We'll see. I could be wrong. Get it going at the corner here. I'm going to try not to stick my finger in the ink. There we go. I just created a towel. Um, I washed this before I used it just for the shrinkage and stuff. Um, I used a dryer sheet. I washed it with my regular clothes just like I would anything. And um, this is not going to affect it at all, as you can see. It stayed on there pretty good. But you can also see it did bleed through onto the other side. So if I were using the Chalk Couture mat, it wouldn't slide around and I wouldn't have to worry about the ink getting on the underside. So because I am worried about that, I don't want to ruin this side by getting it soaked through the other side too. I'm going to leave it exactly where it is to dry. Uh, that's pretty much all I got for tonight. Hey, Kara. <laughs> I just saw you join. Sorry. I'm, I'm not looking at my comments very much. Um, so anyways, those are the three projects that we did. I'll show you again so you can see and like I said that Yeti cup will have to fix that letter G but that's not a big deal and do the other side um, once that transfer is cleaned up but here is the cutting board that we did with the ink so I can heat set this everything we did tonight was with the ink and our towel here of course going in the kitchen and the Yeti cup I can't wait to put that on the other side. Uh, what does it say? Our wild and free is going on the other side. My daughter asked me if she could have one, so we'll see if she wants that one or maybe another one. And then here are the ones that I had done earlier today. I won't turn this because it actually is full of water, but that's the mama's cup with my ombre feather. And my two shirts because I said so and the dream create inspire with the copper ink and the cut apart hearts transfer and lastly 
my hat that I did not use Chalk Couture transfers on, but sure wish that I had. Um, but I did use the inks, so um, it's still kind of awesome because it won't come off, and now I can wear it forever until the hat falls apart, which is kind of my plan. <laughs> and, of course, there's the Chalk Couture paste, uh, which you can make all kinds of stuff, too. There's the surfaces that you can purchase from Chalk Couture. I'll show you one of these real quick because I'm super proud of um, this design. Also, this board is super cool. This came with the starter kit um, when I signed up for Chalk Couture. It's magnetic, so this little flower here is, um, I made this. I went out and bought some silk flowers from the craft store and cut them apart and glued magnets to the back side of them so I could add them to my designs and um, add a little something extra just to jazz it up a little bit. I think that really looks super cute. Oh, I just noticed you can't even see the flower. Sorry, my camera angle's off. I'll show that again. Here is the magnetic flower. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now you can see it. I'm looking at my camera now. Um, anyway, so you can add all kinds of little magnetic embellishments to that. But this is a board that came from Chalk Couture. The frame is really nice. The board is magnetic, um, it doesn't pull up, so if you buy a chalkboard from the craft store, a lot of times the um, like board will start to warp or pull up, or it can, what's called ghosting, so if you were to put down a design and uh, want to wipe it off and do something different, um, it's likely to leave like a shadow of your color behind that might not come off, and if you try to rub it off, you might start rubbing off the color of the chalkboard, which means it's not a legit chalkboard. But anyway, that's all I have for tonight. Um, if you all are interested in Chalk Couture products, you can go to my website. I've got it on the link. The link is on this um, post that I made here for the video. Um, and the necessities for starting with your chalk project um, that you would have to have to begin with is a squeegee, a chalk paste or an ink, and a transfer of your choice. The transfers start at like $7.99, I believe, and they go up from there. Um, some of the transfers are ginormous, and they cost a lot more money, um, but let me tell you, they're totally worth it. It's so much fun to uh, work with Chalk Couture stuff, and the more you do it, the more you enjoy it. I call it um, Craft Crack. <laughs> My friend and I started calling it Craft Crack because once you do it, you just fall in love with it. So anyway, if you are interested, once again, in the uh, free little sample kit, which is your squeegee, a transfer, and your chalk chip, plus a little container of paste, um, you need to just message me and let me know, or you can um, write, you know, a sample kit in the comments on this uh, live feed here, and I will make sure to get with you right away and get that out to you as quickly as possible. I appreciate you all joining me tonight. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a great night.